Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I wanted to share with you how you can take this crazy shadow portal effect and make it so that it looks like it's actually in real footage and like it belongs there. Okay, so here's where we left off last week. Let's take this and put it into some footage and make it look like it belongs in that footage. So the first step to doing that is to get some footage. So let's go plus over here. Let's just add a new layout tab. Then we can switch this to Movie Clip Editor. Now up here, let's grab our footage. See if I can even find that. Ah, here it is. Okay. So we got some footage here. And what we got to do is track this. And tracking is the process of telling Blender how your camera is moving. And then Blender goes, oh, okay. And then it uses a digital camera and matches that motion. So if you have a CG thing and you put it in there, then it looks like it's actually moving with this exact same camera. And that might not be the best way to explain it, but that's the only way my last two brain cells could explain it today. So let's let's start tracking here. So finding a high contrast point, I'm gonna hold down control and click on it, and then I'm gonna go to where it says track here and track it forward. And the footage moves around a whole bunch. We can't really see what's going on. So I'm gonna hit L and that'll lock to the tracking marker. And if we kind of scrub through here, Looks like that stuck to that little bit of snow pretty well. Let's track it backwards. So I'm going to hit this little button here. It goes backwards. And this might take a second just because the footage isn't in the cache. But as it goes, it will put the footage in the cache. And then it will get a lot faster for all the other tracks we put in. Okay, I stopped it there and set the start frame to be 79. So this won't be too ridiculously long. That's okay. We only need it for demonstration purposes and we also need it to look cool so in the snow here there's a few different high contrast points that we can use but i think mostly what we're going to be using is these trees here and it's good to have some objects tracked in the midground and some tracked in the background and some tracked in the foreground if you're able to do that so i'm going to go ahead and add in a whole bunch of tracks we need at least eight tracked through pretty much the entire footage which shouldn't be too hard famous last words Okay, I've got some tracks in here. I think this will work pretty well. If we go over to the tab over here that says Solve, and we switch Refine to be Focal Length, and we set our keyframe A and B, that will be enough to solve the camera motion. So let's figure out our keyframes real quick. If we just scrub through the footage, we're going to look for a point where the perspective shifts, and I think from here to here, there seems like there's a good amount of perspective shift. So I'm going to say that starts at about 180 so we can type that in there and it goes about until 218 Whoop. there we go all right let's track this camera cool we got a reprojection error of 0.45 pixels which is pretty dang good now if we switch back to the layout tab you can see we haven't really been doing much in here that's all right let's grab this camera and add in a tracking constraint. So camera solver is what we're going to use. And when we click that and go into the camera view, you can see everything is just kind of shaking around. So let's line this up a little bit better. If we go back to our tracking tab over here, that is just called layout 001, but that's all right. We're going to want to set a ground plane. So the way you do that is you find at least three trackers that are on the ground. So here's one and here's one over here. I'd say that's pretty much on the ground. I'm going to untoggle L so the view doesn't keep locking the tracks. And there's another track over here on the ground. And these are pretty nicely widespread. So I'm going to go over to orientation here and set that to be the floor. Now if we go back into layout, you can see, hey, our camera is kind of lining up with the floor a little bit. Now we can't see that for sure. So let's go into the camera settings here. Go down to background images. Check that little box, and let's just use this because it's already here. Cool. Now we can see our background footage is going places. If I go G and Shift Z, that'll move the camera around on every axis except for the Z axis. And we can kind of match our little cone thing, or huge cone thing, to be up in the center. 
And if we render it, you can see it's kind of tipped on its side. Maybe you want it going into the ground. I don't know. But I would like it to be kind of rotated up on the Y axis. So I'm going to go R, Y, and 90 degrees. And I'm going to go G, Z, and bring it up a little bit above the ground plane. So something like that. And I'd say it might be a little bit big right now. I'm going to move the camera in a little bit closer here. And I'm also going to select our smoke object and go S and just scale that down a little. GZ, bring it in a little because it's a little bit out of control right now. Okay, something like that might be good, but you can't really tell what's going on. So I'm going to go to the render properties here, down to film and check transparent. And now we can see our background, which is pretty helpful. If we go once again to the camera properties, you can make sure that the background image is fully visible. There we go. That's a little bit better. And I'm just going to grab this portal, shift Z, kind of get it a little bit closer to the camera here. And I'm going to rotate it a little bit so that it's not quite dead on. And that eventually we'll be able to see that it has a bit of dimension going on. Yeah. I like that. Okay, that's good positioning for our dark portal. Let's think about how we're going to composite this together. Now it makes a bit of sense that since it is here, right above the ground, there's going to be a shadow on the ground where the light kind of goes into the portal and just doesn't end up landing on the ground. <laughs> so what I'm going to do for that is actually duplicate this and I'm going to do a really dirty trick. I'm going to scale it on the Z axis by zero. And this effectively gives us just a really flat representation of this 3D object. And if we go into the side view with three on the number pad and maybe into the wireframe, so Z and then wireframe, we can see this object here. I'm just gonna grab it and move it down to the floor. All right, so this is kind of what we got going on here. Now, just a heads up, it's usually a good idea to do this once you've completed everything with the portal and it's in the position that you'd like it to be because we want this to be pretty much exactly the same and right beneath it. So I think I'm all set with all that. So I'm going to grab these and actually move them to another collection. So I'm going to hit M and new collection. Call this shadow. Hey, there we go. All right. So on this view layer here that just says view layer, I'm going to uncheck that and I'm going to add in a new view layer. So I'm going to hit this little paper here, new, and with this new view layer, I'm just going to call it shadow, make sure that our camera is on its own collection. I'm just going to put this in a new collection called render. There we go. Now we'll always have our camera visible. And we can uncheck that and that will go away. Cool. We can still see our camera and on this view layer called shadow, we can only see the shadow. That'll be really helpful for when we go to compositing in a second here. But before that, I'm just going to go into the render panel down to color management. Well, let's make sure this is standard and we see a little bit more vibrancy in the image now. That's cool. Let's check motion blur so we get a little bit of blur on the portal as the camera is moving. And I'd say that's probably good. So let's hop into compositing now. Check use nodes. And I'm just going to get rid of the timeline here and go N to remove that panel. Actually, hold up. I heard recently that there's a pretty cool trick to accelerate things with your GPU. If we go down to options, you can just check OpenCL. Honestly, I don't know what that does. I think it makes things faster, but <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. Not, not proven yet, but it might help. All right, let's get that out of here with N. Okay, so we've got our render layers. We can't see anything right now. Let's go F12 and render this out. And I believe if we duplicate this, and switch this from view layer to shadow, we also have our shadow layer. Now you're probably going to want to enable node wrangler now because we're about to use it a bunch. I like to often hit control and shift and click on a node to be able to view it with this viewer node. But hey, we got our two inputs, we got our shadow and we got our portal and they're both on transparent backgrounds. So that is fantastic. Let's drop in one more input. I'm going to go input and movie clip and automatically that sets to our footage which is pretty cool. Let's drop this shadow in where it's supposed to be. I'm going to go shift A down to color and use an alpha over node. So image goes into the top one and then the image from the shadow, I'm going to drop into the bottom slot. And let's take a look at this. 
Not bad. This is a little bit distinct right now, so let's blur it out a little bit. I'm going to go Shift-A, Filter, and Blur. And let's put this at maybe a 30. I don't know. Well, it looks good. 30 looks all right. Cool. All right, we'll use 30. Increase it if we have to, but we'll see. Now with this alpha over, I'm just going to go Shift-D, duplicate that, and drop it down a little ways. And I'm going to put the shadow gate into the bottom socket. Well, this looks all right, but I think we could go a little bit over the top. Let's edit this a little bit just to make it a little bit better. So if you've got a shadow gate, and it's like a dimensionally warping thing or whatever, it's probably going to look kind of stranger than this. So one thing that I'd like to do is add some distortion to the footage behind the gate. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use my render source here. I'm going to go filter, blur once more. Let's take this to maybe a 60-ish. So in the X and Y values, I'm going to drop in 60, image into image. And let's take a look at what we got here. That seems all right, but I'm actually going to take the alpha because this is just black and white. There we go. That's better. All right. So I'm going to take this and using this source here, I'm going to go shift A drop in a distort and displace yeah displace is what we want okay so i'm going to drop this right on top of here and i'm going to drag the blur value into the vector and if we take a look at this and take a look at this nothing changed and that's because we have to change the x and y scale so i'm going to switch these to maybe a 30 ish let's take a look and see how that works Hey, that's interesting. Now if we take a look at before and after, you can see we've got some crazy warping going on here, which is pretty cool. One more thing I'd like to do is add in some chromatic aberration or uh, dispersion from lens distortion. I don't know, big words, whatever. So yeah, I got that by going Shift-A, Distort, and Lens Distortion. Okay, let's drop the image in there and take a look at it. Nothing fancy. That's all right. Let's go down to the bottom value and use dispersion and crank that up to a beefy 0. 0.5. <laughs> okay. And we're actually going to want to use the source after the displacement. So I'm going to use that, put that into image. Now this is a little bit displaced as well. And now we're going to take this blur and use it to mix this with this. So let's go shift A, color, mix, and drop that right in there line those two up and there we go you can't really see anything because it is set to one so i'm going to take this blur and drop that into the value of the factor and now in the white parts here we can see the crazy color of that lens distortion going on which just gives it some other dimensional effect looking things which I like. I think it looks pretty cool like that. And then once again, at the end, we've got our alpha over of the shadow gate thing. And you can see it just kind of weirdly affects the color around it, which I really love. Now for some cake icing, if we take the image from the alpha over at the end here and plug that into our composite node and our viewer node, we can just hold shift and right click and drag across these. And that adds a nice little Y. And we can drop a couple last nodes on here. I'm going to go shift A, add in a color color balance, and also a shift a distort lens distortion. We're just going to put this at a very low value, like 0.2-ish. That affects the corners kind of nicely. And for our color balance, I'm just going to change this middle one to be a bit bluish, because I like it when things are blue. But hey, that's about all for the compositing. I would say we can render this out and take a look at it. All right, here is the final render looking pretty good now once again as i said last video i believe a lot of these techniques that i just showed you are very applicable in all sorts of other renders that you might want to make especially tracking i use that very much of the time so feel free to mix and match the techniques and come up with your own creative ideas for how to use them now if you're interested in visual effects which i mean if you've made it this far you probably are there's a link in the description that says five tips for integrating your CG objects into live action footage. And we did cover a few of these in this tutorial, but there are quite a few more in that video that you'll probably find pretty useful and it's completely free. So yeah, hit that link in the description if you're interested in learning more about that. But hey, I hope you have an excellent day and I'll catch you again next week. Cheers. Cheers.